man, I am not kidding when I say this. This soup is ridiculous. I literally just destroyed two bowls in under five minutes. This Irish beef stew is so rich, loaded with vegetables, has an amazing Guinness beer broth that everything's cooked in. The best part about it, it is super easy to make. It doesn't matter if it's St. Patty's Day, and yes, it is still spring. This is good all year round. No joke, absolutely delicious. But this soup is also all about timing when it comes to cooking it. But we need to knock out a little prep first. Sound good? Let's cook. We're gonna kick off this recipe by small dicing up a yellow onion. You could use a white onion or even a sweet onion, completely up to you. So slice off the ends, cut it in half, and of course, just like all onions, you need to peel it. And then I'm going to small dice, but of course you could medium dice too if you like big chunks of onion flavor, completely up to you. Now we are going to peel some larger sized carrots and I'm going to simply quarter them and medium dice them. I like big chunky carrots and my family seems to like them too. So eh, this is how I cut them nowadays. I've got some parsnips, which I'm going to peel just like the carrots. I'm going to cut them in the exact same fashion of them as well, medium dice. And I'm going to set them to the side in a bowl with the carrots. I'm keeping them separate from the onions and I'll explain later. Now go ahead and run some garlic cloves through a garlic press or you can finely chop if you're not sick of doing that yet. I am just for your information. Now take the vegetables over to your cooktop. I've got a really large Dutch oven pot. I'm going to add in some olive oil and then I'm going to immediately crank the heat to medium low which is going to be perfect because we're going to add in our onions. And what I want to do now is take the time to caramelize these. Maybe not a full 45 minute caramelization, but definitely a 20 minute caramelization. We want them to be brown. We want them to be translucent. We want them to bring out a lot of sweet flavor, just like you see here. This is the exact consistency, my friends, that you want your onions to be at before adding in the carrots and parsnips. And we're also going to hit it with the finely minced garlic cloves that we hooked up right over top. And then simply stir these. We are going to sweat them on medium low heat for maybe 5 to 10 minutes or so. But this is great timing because we can start preparing our beef. I've got some beef stew meat. And you can find this in the grocery store labeled as that. Sometimes it's stroganoff meat. Sometimes it's stir fry meat. But it's really a thinner sliced cut of beef that's usually fairly inexpensive, about $5 a pound. Of course, you could upgrade to top sirloin, sirloin, filet mignon, ribeye. Completely up to you. But I like to save a little money. And, well, I'd rather put it into the Guinness beer. So what you want to do is medium to large dice these. I like to do it this way because I like them to be bite-sized pieces so I can get the other vegetables in the spoon as well. Head back over to your cooktop and in that same large pot, let's go ahead and have a look at our vegetables. They look perfect. They're nice and tender. Be sure to try it if you like, just in case you're not sure what the consistency should be. We're going to set the vegetables to the side. We're going to put that big old pot back on. I'm going to add in some olive oil and I'm going to crank the heat to medium high because we want it to lightly smoke because it's time to roast up that medium to large diced cut meat. And then immediately add your spoon in there because you want to spread it around to cover as much surface area as possible so that it becomes golden brown. This is perfect. I get it. The procedures may seem a little tedious, but thank goodness the ingredient count is low. Am I right? In the end, it's going to be delicious. Just hold on. I promise you. And it's like I say every single week, Comey's, once you start understanding these fundamental principles of cooking, like caramelizing the onions first to bring about all that flavor, then adding vegetables and taking out and once you do all of these things and apply it to all of your cooking, your homemade food from scratch is going to be way better than anything else, better than the restaurants, better than the stores, you name it, you are going to run the block, my friends. Now. Go ahead and take a look at your beef. You want to move it around after two to three minutes. Again, we're looking at four to six minutes total. We want to get that nice brown on there. That's that caramelization, that natural sugar that comes through, really enhancing the flavor of our meat and, of course, our stew. Now crank the heat down to low and add in some tomato paste. This is going to help thicken up the stew, but as well, it's going to provide a lot of body and a lot of flavor. You're going to get a nice red tint to your broth. This is perfect. And you can see how great this beef looks covered in that tomato paste. Now, of course, add in your Guinness beer or any dark stout. Try not to drink it all. I know it's hard, but it's really good in a stew. And this is going to immediately start to thicken up. You're going to reduce it just a little bit. And by reducing, I mean, maybe a tablespoon or two has been evaporated. You'll see it start to immediately thicken up. This is perfect consistency. We're going to add in some beef stock. 
and then once it's poured in we are going to add on the lid and we're going to cook it for about 45 minutes to help tenderize up that meat on medium low heat with about five minutes left in the cooking process, we're gonna come back and peel up some Yukon potatoes. Russets are maybe more classic here, but I just really love the sugary flavor in Yukon potatoes. Now go have a look at our stew. It looks fantastic. Move some things around, maybe taste the beef, make sure it's nice and tender and you're in a good place because now we're gonna start adding in everything else like the sweated onions, garlic, carrots, and parsnips. And next we're gonna hit it with those large diced potatoes. Go ahead and add those right in there. And then really what we want to do is move a couple things around and cook it just until the potatoes are tender, maybe 12 to 15 minutes. It's okay if it becomes a light boil, you have a lot of ingredients in there, but once they're cooked, we're good to sort of finish off this stew. In Ireland, they really only use four fresh herbs, parsley, rosemary, thyme, and sage. Yes, there are others in there, but those are the most popular ones to use. Now, I always recommend to use parsley and maybe one other because if you put all of those together, it's not gonna taste good. The combination that would be good though is parsley, a little bit of rosemary, and thyme. The combination is fantastic. Go ahead and sprinkle those in there. And then of course, we're gonna season up with some sea salt and some fresh cracked black pepper. Be sure to stir everything together. And remember when it comes to using herbs, you finish with fresh, you start with dry herbs. That's how you get all that flavor in there. Let's head over, let's head over to our cooktop because it's time to plate up. So let's switch over to slow mo. I'm just gonna serve this in a sort of little small bowl. I don't know, it's kind of comforting and goofy, but it's almost like a mug. Looks really, really good. You see those hearty vegetables that are kind of on the top. And then I'm just gonna simply garnish with a little extra fresh thyme and fresh rosemary. Check out this beauty. Super delicious, incredibly easy to make. It doesn't matter what time of year it is, you need to hook this up. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and definitely check out this recipe because it is so good, and I'll see you on there.